Last time we talked about cyclic quadrilaterals, but in this video we're going to explore polygons. Starting off with some basic formulas which we also covered in the angle chasing videos, the sum of the interior angles of a polygon are, is n minus 2 times 180, and the interior angle of a regular polygon, to get this we just divide by n, the number of sides, because in a regular polygon all angles are equal. And this is another useful angle chasing property which is used very often. The exterior angle of any regular polygon is just 360 divided by the number of sides of that polygon. And there's a table here of some common values if you want to memorize them. You can often save a little bit of time if you do this. Okay, so now we'll move on to hexagons. So these are some angle chasing derived from our previous identities. And a very cool property about hexagons you're probably familiar with is that we can divide it into six equilateral triangles. And this is almost a very, very common technique in these types of problems to divide it into six equilateral triangles. And let's see these all have a side length of s. The area of an equilateral triangle is root 3 over 4 side squared. And of course there's six of them, so times 6. Now what is the length of the diagonal of a hexagon? Well there's s and s, so 2s. And another common thing that you might be asked is to find the length of this diagonal over here. And this also is not that difficult. The 120 degree angle of a regular hexagon can be split into 60 and 60. And take a look at that. We've got two 30, 60, 90 triangles. Okay, again, let's say that's S. Then this will be S over 2. And this will be S root 3 over 2. So in total, S root 3 over 2 plus S root 3 over 2 that's s root 3. So the length of this diagonal of a regular hexagon is s root 3. Now let's move on to a simple example that uses hexagons. Six regular hexagons surround a regular hexagon of side length 1. So all of these have a side length of 1. And six regular hexagons surround it. So this regular hexagon every side of each of these regular hexagons will also be 1 because they share a side. And if two regular hexagons share a side, then every side of that reg both of the regular hexagons must be the same because all sides equal. So we have for all these hexagons, their side length is 1. How do we find the area of this triangle? First of all, notice that let's try to find the side lengths of these triangles first of all. Remember the property we just learned? That if the side is s, then the length of this diagonal is s root 3? Well, let's try and use that here. Aha! 1, 1, so this is square root of 3. Similarly, this is square root of 3. And this is square root of 3. And this is square root of 3. And the same thing is true for all of these, because root 3 times the side length. So now, We've got a triangle with sides of length 2 root 3, 2 root 3, and 2 root 3. It's an equilateral triangle. So we can use the equilateral triangle area formula. Root 3 over 4 side squared. And in this case our side is 2 times root 3. So this is equal to root 3 over 4 times 2 root 3 squared, which is 12. So root 3 over 4 times 12. And that's 3 root 3. And that's our final answer for this problem. To summarize, all we had to do was use this cool property of a hexagon. Okay, now we're going to move on to our next problem. A convex hexagon, A, B, C, D, F. All six sides are the same. A and D are right angles. B, C, D, E, F. All of these angles are congruent. The area of the hexagon we're given and we're asked to find AB. And because all the sides are congruent, we're really just asked to find one of the sides of the hexagon. And this should be C over here. 
okay, so first of all, we're given that these four angles are all congruent. What is the measure of each of these four angles? The total sum of angles in a regular hexagon is 6 minus 2 times 180, or 720 degrees. That's the total. And we know two of the angles are 90. So we subtract both of those angles off to get 540. But then notice that each of these four angles, all of which are equal, have a total sum of 540. Because that's the sum of, the, of these four angles. So let's just write a simple equation. We have 4x equals 540. And 540 divided by 4 is what? 540 divided by 2 is 270. And 270 divided by 2 is 135. So each of these angles has a measure of 135 degrees. Okay, so now we're given the area of this hexagon. And this problem actually de demonstrates a very powerful technique in these types of polygon problems, where often the trick is simply to divide it into smaller shapes. We've got a 90 degree angle here, and 135 might seem familiar to you. It's 90 plus 45. So what if we just draw a line here? Hmm. Well, both of these angles are the same, and the sum of these two blue angles in 90 is 180. And again, we know that these two sides are congruent, so that's why we have the two blue angles equal. It's a 45-45-90 triangle. This is 45, and this is 45. And if the total angle E is 135, that means that this part... is 90 degrees. Similarly, we've got that this part is 90 degrees as well. And we can do the same thing on the other side. We draw a line here. This is 45. This is 45. And these are both 90. Hmm. So now, let's just say the side length of this hexagon is x. They're all x. So by our 45, 45, 90 triangles, this will be x root 2, and this will be x root 2 as well. So now let's try and use this area condition over here. If you can find the area in terms of x, we can solve for x, which is also a, b. So let's write the area in terms of x. We have two triangles. Each of these triangles has an area of half space times height. And there's two of these triangles. The square or rectangle in the middle has an area of x times x root 2, or x squared root 2. So overall, our area is x squared times 1 plus root 2. And this is equal to 2116 times root 2 plus 1. And I'm just going to write it as 1 plus root 2. And now we can cancel 1 plus root 2 from both sides. We get that x squared is 2116. And there's some really cool tricks for square rooting numbers. In this case, we would have that we look at the ignore the last two digits. So leave those aside, and look at these first two digits. Notice that 40 squared is 1,600. 50 squared is 2,500. So it has to be between 40 and 50. Now notice the last digit is a 6. So that means the last digit of the number we're squaring must be a 4 or a 6, because those are the only two numbers that, when squared, give a number that has a unit digit of 6. And we know the 10 digit is 4 by our analysis earlier. Okay, so now we, it's just a matter of testing 44 and 46. And we can do this. We, we'll actually find that 46 squared is 2116. So the square root, so x is equal to 46. And that is our answer. The side length AB is 46.
And the key idea in this, this problem and many other problems is when you have these giant polygons, you want to break it up into smaller pieces because that those pieces are easier to find the area of. Let's now take a look at this example from the Amy. A hexagon is inscribed in a circle, has side lengths 22, 22, 20, 22, 22, 20 in that order. I know this diagram is a little bit off scale, but that's okay. We're asked to find the radius of this circle. How can we do this? So a key strategy in these types of problems is to draw all important radii. What is an important radii? An important radii is anything that connects the center of a circle to an already well-defined point. We always want to draw all of these radii because that's really what the circle condition is telling us. The definition of a circle is a figure that has all points equidistant from the center. So when this question says it's inscribed in a circle, all the circle really tells us is that all the points on that circle are equidistant from the center. And really the only points we care about on that circle are the points of the hexagon. So if we draw all these radii in and label them R, that's really all the information we're gonna need from this circle condition. We can just erase the circle from there because we've already extracted all of its information. Okay, so now we're, we've drawn all the important radii in. How should we solve for it? We have a lot of information. We have every single side length and we have all these R conditions. First thing to notice is that this is an isosceles trapezoid because these two sides are equal. And this whole figure is symmetric, of course, so these two sides are going to be parallel because of the symmetry of the right and left halves. The first thing to notice about, it's a really good strategy in isosceles trapezoids. We have all these R's. Let's try and find the height, height of the isosceles trapezoid. First, let's look at this height over here. Whenever you have isosceles triangles, it's often a very, very good idea to drop the altitude. Why? Well, notice in this triangle over here, dropping the altitude forms two congruent triangles by hypotenuse leg congruence. And that's really useful because now we know that both of these parts over here are each 10. So now, what is the height of this trapezoid? By the Pythagorean theorem, we have 10 squared, plus let's call this x squared, is r squared. And we get x squared is r squared minus 100, or x is the square root of r squared minus 100. So we can just write this in place of x, but I'll just leave it x for now. But really when, when I say x, you know I mean this. We don't need to add an additional variable, but in this case, writing it everywhere would just be harder. Okay, so now we have this altitude of the isosceles trapezoid. How should we use it? Well, this altitude will also be the same. Cool, so this altitude will be the same throughout. This will also be square root of r squared minus 100. So notice over here, we've, because we've dropped another altitude, these are both going to be 90. What do we know about this length over here? Notice that the top one is 10. So this bottom one is going to be 10 as well. So let's write 10 as over there. The reason is because this is a rectangle. These sides are parallel because it's a trapezoid and these angles are both 90. And from that, we would, we, we can get that all four angles are 90 and these two sides are also parallel. 
because they're both altitudes, they're both perpendicular to parallel sides. So this is also going to be 10 by rectangle properties. And because this entire distance is r, we get that this part over here is r minus 10, just by subtraction. Okay, that's cool. We know this is r minus 10. But wait, we know this is square root of r squared minus 100. And this is 22. We can use the Pythagorean theorem. Let's do this. r minus 10 squared plus x squared, and that's just r squared minus 100, is equal to 22 squared, 4, 8, 4. Let's expand. And then we, of course, add r squared minus 100. And the plus 100 and minus 100, they cancel. So we're just left with 2r squared minus 20r minus 4a4 is 0. And that we divide by 2 to the quadratic, we get r squared minus 10r minus 2 for 2 is 0, or quadratic formula, 10 plus or minus 100 plus 4 times 2 for 2 divided by 4. And if this is negative, our radius is going to be negative, and that's not really possible. So we can just ignore the negative. And now we can just divide by four to this quantity here. Or this should be two. And that we get five plus. And in order to divide by two from the square root, we can just divide by four in the side of the square root because dividing by four inside the square root is equivalent to dividing by two. And we do that, we get square root of 25 plus 2 for 2. And this gives 5 plus the square root of 267. And because of our answer format, p plus root q, finding p plus q, our answer is just 5 plus 267, which is 272. So now let's look at the key ideas in this problem. The main one, which is true amongst any circle problem, you have to draw the important radii, all of them. This is so many times where you have a circle and you just don't do anything with that circle. Draw, take the center and connect the radii to every single point that's defined in your problem. Of course, you don't want to be drawing random radii like this, which don't really give you any information. And the second, the main observation here is really this isosceles trapezoid, and that's a little bit tricky to spot. When you have an isosceles trapezoid, you can drop an altitude. And dropping an altitude is, then becomes very easy to find the length of that altitude, but in two different ways. We found it using this right triangle, and we found it using this right triangle. And that gave us an equation in terms of r, which we promptly solved. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to check out the next video where we'll go over octagon and a cool pentagon problem.